Okay, uh, I'm just going to show you the Grunt TDD plugin. So you'll see my empty project in the WebStorm on the right and my terminal on the left. We'll kick this off by actually installing um, the plugin. Uh, I've been doing some testing here, so I'm just going to make sure my npm doesn't mess up anything. So, and we'll install grunt tdd. While that's installing, we'll get over to the project and set up our configuration file, and like so. Uh, that's my grunt file.js, which will configure my task. Let's just close that one. And maybe make it a little bit bigger, like so. Uh, exports and uh, grunt uh, which has in it config uh, and then we have um, the tdd task which is the name you'll be using also uh, and we have to give a name to our specific configuration which will be browser this time this could be anything um, I think my task uh, sorry my installation is done um, so I'll be also installing another plugin called uh, grunt contrib watch which is a dependency to the to the grunt tdd plugin so we'll just kick that off and go back to our configuration Okay, so browser, uh, the configuration uh, needs two different things. First of all, it needs files, um, which includes sources, which is uh, the path to your source files, uh, the source files of the project. Uh, let's just, oops, let's, let's do that. Mm, star star dot js. So it will include any JavaScript file in the SRC folder. Um, if I have any libraries, I would define that in the libs array. Uh, this could be jQuery, Angular, JS, Backbone, um, underscore, yeah, you know. Um, but I don't have any libraries at the moment, so I'll just skip that. Uh, but I do have to define my tests folder which I'll put under client um, and I usually have this post fix uh, convention of dash test uh, which helps a lot when um, I'm um, working with a test file and a source file very often they have the same name and of course the dash test will help me identify which file is actually the test um, Going on here, uh, we also need uh, options where we'll define a runner. I'll choose Buster this time because I just love the syntax of Buster. But you could choose, uh, choose Jasmine or Mocha. Uh, I'll also include uh, expect true, which means that I will use the expect.js assertion tool instead of the the one including uh, with Buster, uh, just because I, I really like expect.js. Um, so there we go, and we'll also have to load um, the actual plugin here. Grunt TDD. There. So uh, what we'll do first is actually create our test file. So let's go and create our client directory. I just create the SRC folder just so you get an idea of the structure here. Um, and of course the tests folder and let's add the test like that. Okay so we're in like Buster so I'll use Buster syntax, uh, Buster test case, my fantastic test case and we'll define our first test, uh, my first test. And 
since expect is in uh, expect.js is included, I can just use it like this, and we'll expect true to be true. There we go. Okay, so let's get into the into the the interesting stuff here. Um, to to kick off the the plugin, we'll just write grunt and tdd and browser. Now it has started um, a service running on localhost 3001. And by going to grow and refreshing, we can see uh, the test case being presented. Uh, of course, everything's green because true is true. Uh, and we can see how many success. Um, successful tests and uh, how many gave errors and timeouts and, and stuff like that and on the top right you can actually choose uh, the different tests um, like so so you don't start your test from the terminal you just start a reporter in, uh, reporter up and, and you choose your test file um, so here you see your test uh, if I now go and change this to false you see that the uh, uh, test reporter will automatically refresh. Um, also notice that the, that the stack trace is filtered, so you'll only get stack traces related to your test files and, and source files, and that's very, very nice. Um, there's also been a lot of work uh, figuring out what to highlight uh, and stuff like that, so it should be really nice and, and easy to, to identify what fails and where it fails and stuff like that. Um, I also want to show you the, the collapsing uh, of tests. So if I add uh, my second test, like that, and we'll expect that to be true also. Sorry about the bad examples here, but this is not to help you write, uh, to write your tests, it's just to show you the process of, of writing tests which is frankly the most important part. So I'll save again and it pops up uh, in the reporter. So if I go to the browser window uh, and hit my spacebar, you see that the, the tests were collapsed, like so. So if I go back and I fail one of the tests, it pops right back up. So you can imagine having like 40 tests nested within each other, and, and all that, uh, it will of course collapse like you'd expect and, and highlight the error like you see here. So that's collapsing tests. Uh, and really that's it for, for like normal browser tests. Um, so let's jump into, into, into Node, um, which also actually represents the test results in the browser like you, like you see normal browser tests. So uh, we'll first have to add a new configuration. Uh, let's just call it node. Again, defining where my files are located. Uh, server, oops, like that libs, no libs. This would of course then use require to load any modules before running the test. Um, not very common, but it's possible. Um, again, server tests, and we use the same naming convention here. Uh, oops, not bad. Uh, and we'll save that. Um, of course, we have to actually create the files. Uh, server again just creating the source directory Oops. Uh, tests and adding a new test file uh, and of course this being live I should uh, I forgot some <laughs> configuration so uh, for now, I've just created my test file. Of course, I have to type in my options. And normally, I would of course use Buster 
to as a runner, but just to, to show you what this uh, thing can do, um, I'll change to Jasmine when doing uh, node tests. I have to tell the plugin to actually uh, run, the, run the tests in node. And again, I'm going to use the expect assertion tool. Uh, so instead of Buster and Jasmine, I could of course also use Mocha, um, like that. Mm. So we'll close our old test file and focus on our node test file. So since we're running uh, on Jasmine, we'll have to uh, change our syntax a bit. Uh, another fantastic test looks like this. This is of course also nice. It's, it's just typically when you write code you write it, well at least I do, uh, like in objects and methods and, and stuff like that and it's really nice to have your tests written in that manner also. Um, actual test. Um, there we go. I expect true to be true. Okay, uh, now that's ready to roll, so we'll change back to the terminal just to close the current process and fire it up again. Um, where we're running on the node configuration. Again, it's the same thing. You just go to your browser and refresh, and here we see our test being um, our test result being presented. Uh, as you can see at the top right, it's the it's the server test file running at the moment. So um, if I go to my test and I change it, the same thing happens as we saw earlier. The cool thing here is that the test is of course actually running in Node, but the result is is collected from Node and and passed to the browser. So it can display the same kind of uh, result which you saw earlier uh, on the browser uh, tests. Um, so um, it doesn't really, it's no different. It's just, it's just amazing to, to actually write node tests and get a result that is not in the terminal. Uh, which gives you this highlighting and filtered stack traces uh, and all that. It really helps the, the process. Um, uh, and, and, and that's the whole clue with this, this plugin. It's you write your test, uh, you, you automatically get a, a result on the test and it should fail the first time. Then you implement your, your code. And when you do that, you will just see your, your tests passing. It's not interrupting the process of writing tests and implementing code. It's just it's just there, and it really helps you. Um, ideally, you should run this on two on two mon monitors: uh, one for the reporter and one for your IDE uh, writing your tests. Um, but yeah, I just have this one monitor just to show you. Um, okay, but just to to finish this off, uh, I'm also going to show you that. It's possible to run these tests in the terminal uh, because you can have like lots of tests and it's it doesn't make sense to, to show all those results directly in the browser. May, maybe you want to automate something with Jenkins or whatever. Uh, and then it's kind of nice to, to have these tests running in the terminal. Um, so we'll jump back to the terminal, quit the process. And you type the same thing. Uh, let's run the browser tests first. Uh, but you add the flag of run all. What happens now is that the plugin will run the same tests on PhantomJS, which is a headless browser. So it's basically the same as running uh, directly in Chrome or whatever browser you, you choose. Um, uh, and you get uh, uh, get this kind of result. And if I do the same with the node, I get the exact same result. And it doesn't matter what runner I use. This is this is my feedback. 
Um, I can, of course, show you how it looks if one of them fails. And here we can see that we get the same uh, filtered stack trace, and it's it's very easy to identify which file uh, have the problem and, and where did it actually fail. Um, yes. So that's uh, basically it. Um, why uh, the reason I I built this was to to help people get going with test driven development. It's I don't think developers have any problem understanding that test driven development is a good thing. It's important to write tests, but it's uh, but it's hard to to figure out the process, um, and often you get blocked by having to run stuff in your terminal or whatever. Um, and it, it doesn't really help you in the process of implementing code. It's just added work. So I hope this uh, will make things better and easier for you. It doesn't cover like all possible test scenarios, uh, like test beds and, and all that stuff, but it's just to get you going with test driven development, uh, which is the which is the most important part. So thanks for checking it out and uh, good luck going test driven. <laughs>